this is what the future of the internet looks like. And I know, I know, I know, I know. It's a 10-year-old desktop computer. How can it be the future of anything? Apart from me cleaning this room. But hear me out. This computer sitting here on this desk has got unused storage space. Your laptop, unused storage space. The phone in your pocket, unused storage space. Dusty corners of indie data centers, office networks around the world, massive amounts of unused storage space. I mean, how much storage space do you think we're talking about? Well, if you take Amazon, you take Google, you take Microsoft, you take Cloudfly, you take all the big cloud providers and add up all their storage combined, and we have got more unused capacity sitting on internet connected devices than all of them put together. And that is just sitting there completely underutilized. What if there was a way that these computers could just talk to each other and organize themselves to create one large hard drive? How exactly would that work? And what would it mean? And what could we do with it? Well, it's the autonomy network. And you can think of it as like one giant hard drive, one huge cyber brain, a massive storage layer that spans the internet itself. And what's interesting is you don't have to rent space from Amazon to use it. You don't have to buy a server from somewhere. This is just what the internet can be now and do now inherently thanks to a protocol. Think of it like this, HTTP is a protocol. It lets web pages load. SMTP sends your emails. Well, autonomy is a protocol, a series of rules for how computers can talk to each other. And this one, lets them create storage together. And we have made this autonomous. These computers can get on and do this together by themselves. They can cooperate and collaborate and assemble themselves on their own to manage and store the world's data. We don't have to have someone controlling it from the center. We don't need to pay someone to orchestrate this or give them the keys to the kingdom. It's an autonomous network that serves humanity and we can all contribute to it. We all look after it really simply by providing some of the storage space on these everyday devices. Now, you're probably thinking, hang on, I don't really want my data on someone else's hard drive or I don't want some rando's music collection on my computer. How can that be secure? And that's exactly the right question to ask because if we're gonna have a world-size hard drive, if we're gonna utilize all this spare capacity and make it useful for humanity, it's got to be secure. You've got to be able to trust it. And that's why the only person you need to trust is yourself. As part of this protocol, we've designed something called self-encryption or self-encrypting data. Now I'm gonna dig into exactly what self-encryption is and how that works in a future video, but suffice to say, only you have control over this data. Only you can reassemble it because it's your data and you hold the keys to it. And it gets reassembled for you on your device when you request it back. Nobody else can read it, nobody else can see it, just you. So how does this actually work in practice? Well, you can think of this whole system a bit like Airbnb for your hard drive. You give a little bit of space from your drive, you rent it out to guests who store their broken up, highly encrypted data on it. And of course, you can't reassemble it, you can't look at it, it just sits there in the background being useful for other people. Encrypted, unfathomable, unreadable noise. And what do you get out of it? Well, you get paid. There's supply and demand. You get rewarded for providing this storage space and you receive a utility token for doing so. And what you do with those rewards is up to you. I mean, the main thing is you can store your data on the network with them when you need to. That's the primary use case. Contribute storage, use storage. Or if you just use the network and don't want to provide storage yourself, you can just buy tokens and use them to store your data. And by the way, side note here, it's always free to download your data and get it back from the network. You don't pay to do that. You only pay when you store data on the network. You pay once for that and it's always there. It sounds crazy and I'll, I'll probably need to do another explainer on that too. So we'll, we will come back to that. But if you wanna sell your tokens as well, you can do that. You can pay your electricity bills, pay for another service. That's fine, all good. Fair exchange, supply and demand. And if this sounds familiar. There's literally millions of times more computing power in my phone and that's just sitting in my pocket if you feel like maybe i've heard this before billions of phones all around the world with the same computing power just sitting in people's pockets you might just have watched silicon valley season four where they build this exact network what if we use all those phones to build a massive network we could build 
a completely decentralized version of our current internet. And funnily enough, that show was based on this technology. It was based on MadeSafe, the company behind this open source project, Autonomy. We were technical advisors for that series. So it's, it's a lot of fun. I recommend it. You should go watch it. But it's a question of art imitating life here. The show that went into fiction territory, but this is real. It's not a TV show. It's not vaporware. It's a real thing. It's alive and kicking right now. So this old computer, it's not the past. It's part of the future. It's part of a global network that's creating something entirely new. And it comes at a time where big tech seems to want to own every corner of the internet and AI companies are buying up land at a furious rate in beautiful rural parts of the world for data centers. We need this kind of thing more than ever to make the most out of these really precious resources. And the icing on the cake, this is something we all have a stake in and we can all own it and we can all access it and we can all share in it just as the internet was originally intended. And it's thanks to the beauty of cryptography and the wonderful nature of protocols. If you want to learn more about autonomy, check out the links below. And if this interests you and you want to see where this goes, subscribe because we're just getting started and I am here to tell you all about it.